Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And how are we all today? Well, as you can see, today is absolutely fantastic. What a beautiful, clear blue sky. Uh, the weather forecast from the lovely Amanda is uh, morning ginge, Tuesday's weather, sunshine and very warm. High of 26 degree, will feel like 30, enjoy the day. And also, uh, just to let you know that today we only have one flight in. Uh, and that is from uh, by Tui, uh, Tui, Brussels, and that is in today. And obviously that's flying in from uh, Brussels. So again, beautiful day today. And there's only one aircraft flying in a tourist, uh, even though we are now technically in our season. So there you go. That's the view looking down towards Amber Lockerbie, Pantocratera, and also Kerry direction. And uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Big shout out to Heather Nash and also Pete Atkins, who's tuning in and says, uh, morning, DJ Ginge, he says, and morning to you as well, Peter. I hope you're having a nice time wherever you might be in the world. Uh, Mark and Six is also saying hello as well. And uh, yeah, people are off. That's the landlord's uh, wife off there into town. Probably off to see a mother, actually, and make sure she's all right. But anyway, there you go. Beautiful day, so warm so hot and if you look we can see little butterflies just uh flapping around and the and the flowers are looking really nice as well aren't they looking absolutely gorgeous and uh as we pan up to uh the hill and behind that hill it's the direction of sylvie again it's looking lovely up there anyway we're both into town today jane and i uh got little administrative jobs to do and um be nice go for a coffee as well in the town so there you go that's a look at the weather today here in Zakynthos and it's looking absolutely gorgeous I know people are going all oh, we can't wait to get here and uh, we can't wait to see you as well that is for sure right let's have a look at the uh, news then for uh, today there's been quite a bit going on as well in the last 24 hours in Greece and also uh, our Covid stats as well. mm, up and down is the best way to describe that right so once again just to remind you it's the uh, 18th of may and it's a tuesday anyway covid in the last 24 hours in greece i'm afraid uh, well new infections are up again uh yesterday i did report we have 1262 new infections uh this morning it's 1402 new infections recorded across the country uh, there were four new cases identified at ports of entry into the country. That was exactly the same as on the last report. And uh, according to the national stats, there were two new cases in Lekarda, one new case in Kefalonia, uh, 10 new cases on Corfu, and Zakynthos has not recorded any cases whatsoever. And that's also been confirmed in the local media where they're not reporting any new infections. So at the moment, our uh, infections for this month stands at 22 cases and uh, 545 positive cases since the beginning of the year. So in all in all, uh, it's, it's looking good. Anyway, when it comes to new deaths across the country, unfortunately, those have risen slightly. Uh, we had 56 new deaths uh, registered across the country which was up on the day before where we had 50. Uh, once again, that brings the death toll now up to 11,471 people since the pandemic started, of which 96 had underlying health conditions or were over the age of 70 years of age. Um, when it comes to incubations in ICUs, good news on that factor is it's actually down slightly from the other day. We had 656 people in incubation the other day. Uh, now we have uh, 647, 405 of those are male and 242 of those are female. Right then, here's the news then, what's been going on? Right, uh, news that has been released in Greece is that the British pharmaceutical company GlaxoSmithKline has confirmed results from a phase two clinical trials and its COVID vaccination and vaccine developed in conjunction with the French pharmaceutical company Sanhoff. 
Anyway, uh, results have shown that the vaccine the vaccine produces neutralizing antibodies in all ages in 95 percent to 100 percent of patients at levels which are comparable to those seen in people who had covered or recovered from COVID-19. Anyway, the final clinical trials on this new vaccine uh, will begin in a few weeks. Uh, the vaccine is uh, given in a combination with an ambient, a drug that acts as a vaccine booster, which is produced by GlaxoCline as well. So again, uh, hopes of another new vaccine variant on the way. However, uh, some news that has literally was hot off the press this morning. Um, after suffering from one blood clot shortly after receiving the AstraZeneca uh, coronavirus vaccine, a man in Crete uh, then suffered a second one, uh, making his case unique in the in all of Europe. Now, the name of the gentleman, uh, Alexandros Metaxis, a 35-year-old from the island of Crete, suffered his first blood clot 11 days after receiving his first dose of the AstraZeneca shot which had been linked to rare blood clots, uh, particular in, particularly in young women. Now, Metaxas had surgery on his leg to treat the clot and believed that his ordeal was over. However, shockingly, uh, both Metaxas himself and his doctors, the young man came down with a similar blood clot only a few days after surgery in an extremely dangerous location. It actually was in his carotid artery, which is the main uh, blood vessel which goes to the brain. Anyway, luckily, Mitz attack, uh, sorry, M <laughs> no, I'll say his name and it's the same as the brandy. Metaxas was still in the hospital recovering from his initial surgery when the doctors realized he had had a second blood clot, which was in his neck. Anyway, they're able to whisk the young man into surgery quickly, saving his life and removing the blood clot during a four hour procedure. Doctors maintain that Metaxas is likely to be the only case of such a double blood clot from an AstraZeneca vaccine, only, not only in Greece, but also in all of Europe. Uh, the man from Crete believes that the rare blood clots are linked to the AstraZeneca shot as he had no other health issues and was not taking any other form of medication. So there you go, that's an interesting story and we'll see how that pans out as it goes on. Now, um, interestingly, the uh, Greek finance minister said on Monday, uh, Greece will help its key tourist industry with additional financial packages worth over 400 million euros. Yep, uh, Greece uh, generates about a fifth of its economy output, output from tourism, which officially opened on Saturday, if you remember, although it opened uh, technically on Thursday here in Zakynthos. And they're hoping they are going to save the summer season after revenues collapsed last year due to the restrictions to contain the COVID pandemic. Anyway, uh, Finance Minister Christos Styriakos uh, told Greek Radio uh, that there will be a target support plan for, t of, for tourism, which is estimated to cost more than 400 million euros. Strakakis uh, said further details about the support package would be announced when the government had finalised its plans. Now, the government has jumped, has pumped in uh, 39 billion euros to help shield businesses and workers in different sectors, including tourism, from the fallout of the pandemic. But it has also promised that the pullback of support will only be gradual. So at the moment, they're looking at pumping more money into the tourism season. Really, what we want is for decisions to be made so that the uh, Greece is on the green as far as the UK is concerned. So at least the highest uh, giving demographic uh, is able to come here to Zakynthos, the Germans being the first, the British being the second. And for Zakynthos, the British are the, are the number one. So again, that's going to be interesting, but it's also going to be interesting to see where they're going to put this money in. Uh, at the moment, as I've already reported, we only have two hotels open here on the island at the moment that are actually uh, doing any business with guests. Um, so again, if everybody decides that they're going to shut because no one is coming, uh, we're still relying on Boris to make it clear as to whether we are going to get the British here uh, in June at least, but we'll wait and see. Uh, interestingly, the bosses of British Airways and London's Heathrow Airport 
um, urged the UK government on Monday uh, to reopen up more routes for travel, including uh, the United States and also Greece as well, and also to simplify testing uh, testing hurdles that are needed for people to be able to travel. Now, Britain lifted a ban on international travel on Monday, uh, but the UK government has uh, designated only 12 countries and territories safe for quarantine-free travel, and that is on their green list, of which you are aware we are not on that green list. However, what is crucial is that travel becomes easier for people. That's what the chief executive of British Airways said, uh, Sean Doyle, in a press conference. He said a meaningful return of flying this summer is needed to help airlines and travel companies survive after over a year of COVID restrictions, uh, which would require the government to relax some of its measures. Now, UK ministries have said people should not go on holiday to countries that are not on the green list. And Prime Minister Boris Johnson said on Friday that it would not be extended at any time soon because of the risk of new variants. Anyway, Heathrow said uh, the limited opening meant that it had 11,000 people flying out on Monday, up from 7,000 the week before, but well below the typical 120,000 that would be flying uh, pre-pandemic era. Anyway, BA said it was uh, flying just a fraction of the 200 flights per day. It would usually be operating in this period. Uh, Heathrow's chief executive, uh, John Holland Kay, has said the United States, the Caribbean, France, Greece and Spain should all make it onto the green list before next summer. Uh, sorry, before the summer. Sorry, I apologise for that. He said, however, but there seems to be scant political appetite for doing so. Uh, we are calling on the British government to help people to plan ahead by publishing a list of countries expected to be on the green list for the summer. Now, that's the first time I've heard that being said, that uh, even just kind of say early that it, that, that we're going to be on a list so that, we can obviously people can obviously plan their future rather than all of a sudden we're on the list and then obviously there's a mass rush to obviously uh, book holidays anyway uh, the bosses also said fully vaccinated people should not require a covid-19 test upon return from a low risk country and that cheaper lateral flow tests should be sufficient for those who are not vaccinated Bravo. That's what I want to hear. Anyway, um, uh, multiple COVID-19 testing requirements can be more, uh, can cost more than a flight. They also said for some people, different uh, different country requirements are also hampering a travel bounce back. So depending on where you go and the different requirements for that location uh, will depend uh, as to the extra cost you're going to spend in testing. However, once again, Greece has already said you've had a COVID-19 test. Uh, uh, you can come uh, if you have had the vaccination. You can come. No trouble whatsoever. So, again, uh, it's the going back which is the hard bit at the moment. Uh, at the moment, if you leave Greece and you go back to the UK, you're talking 10 days quarantine. You're also talking two uh, PCR tests as well. And also all the mountains of paperwork, PDF forms and all the other crap you have to fill out just to be able to get out of here to go there and also vice versa to come here. So again, uh, we shall hopefully see if some common sense prevails. Anyway, another little interesting story from the week from the weekend, which I know is going to interest some people here on the island. Uh, Zakynthos hunters uh, made their presence known on Sunday in a protest rally that was held in Solomon Square at their opposition to Article 5 of a new law on the compulsory sterilisation of their animals. Now, many hunters had their dogs with them. Uh, the bill is aimed at making animal owners more responsible for looking after their dogs and to prevent the dumping of unwanted strays and for owners to neuter uh, their animals unless they are a, a, a particular breed and they want to breed them and they obviously then require uh, separate criteria of legislation to cover the breeding of animals anyway animal welfare groups are welcoming this move because it's seen as a way to stem the tide of uh, dumped animals 
either because people can't afford to keep them or because people just will not neuter their animals because it's seen in some ways as to be seen as cruel uh, in the eyes of certain parts of the population. However, what was noted by the local press here, that the turnout of people <clears throat> for that demonstration wasn't exactly a massive turnout, uh, which would have kind of been expected. And I think, to be honest, um, too much has been read into this bill. I think it's probably a positive move forward. Uh, if you're going to be the owner of an animal, whether it's a hunting dog or whether it's a family pet, um, you should make the decision to have the pet neutered unless, of course, you're uh, somebody who wants puppies. But then again, if you want puppies and you're running it as a business, which has happened in the UK, then obviously there should be licenses and criteria to cover that. Uh, and also, again, to be honest, we have enough dumped and stray animals on this island, and this is one way to stop it. But the, old, the other uh, part of this is that those people who refuse to have their animals uh, uh, um, neutered uh, can end up becoming, uh, being fined and obviously uh, le legal ramifications against them. So I think, to be honest, um, it's all a bit of a storm in a teacup. Uh, the hunters, you're not being deprived of anything. Just because they're asking you to neuter your dog, unless you want your dog to breed with the other dogs, then obviously there is another criteria for that. Uh, which is known as breeding, and therefore you would have to obviously uh, be able to do that. I think um, the responsibility now is responsible dog ownership. Most hunters are responsible dog owners anyway, but I can't understand why uh, they see um, that uh, they're being penalised in some respects. But again, as always, it's the few that spoil it for the many. But unfortunately, on this island, uh, even speaking to people yesterday who are fostering animals at the moment, uh, simply because they've got nowhere else to go, otherwise they would be out on the street. And again, there is still the uh, ramifications of rules being changed to allow um, animals to be sent off the island to homes in the UK and Germany and Holland. Uh, which again has not yet been ratified. So those animal welfare groups like Healing Paws, Xanti Strays, Zakynthos Animal Welfare are still doing a big job looking after and hosting animals that at the moment haven't got anywhere to go uh, simply because again new laws have to be are being ratified at the moment over that. And uh, once again, if you want to help any of those people, uh, please uh, just go online, speak to Mike, Mike Glattenley. Uh, and ask him what is it you need we know they probably need money more than anything else uh, just to cover costs to, to look after these animals at the moment which these people are doing for nothing they're doing it just out of the love for the animals but again at the end of the day um, it's, a, it's a saga that's been ongoing for many many years and I do see some hope actually at the, at the end of the tunnel over that subject. And finally then, uh, anybody who's been in Zakynthos town, you'll have noticed that the front of the uh, sea, uh, the boulevard that stretches along the front there, there's been work going on on that. Well, it has been said that the work on that is going to be completed. They're talking about the first 20 days of June. The work should be done by the 20th of June. There's been a complete re-renovation of the main walkway across there. The money for that has come from the uh, Coastal Fund. Uh, the chief um, president of the Port Fund uh, said that the delays for that work has been caused because they're having to put power points in uh, for yachts and boats to moor up so that the uh, port itself is now becoming a much more attractive place for yacht owners and boat owners uh, from outside the island to come and sail into and be able to moor up here in Zakynthos. So one of the reasons that that uh, work has been put on hold is because they've had to uh, re-look at how they're going to put these uh, uh, mooring points with power and, and electric uh, in on that location. But anyway, that seems to have all been resolved now. And uh, according to the president, uh, the work should be finished for the whole of that coastal road area along there to be done by the 20th. And I think it's going to look absolutely fabulous. It'll just make the, uh, the island look a lot better and uh, that will get done. Anyway, that's it with the news for today. Uh, let's have a quick look, see who's tuning in at the moment. I see a few people looking in. Alf Ling is watching. Nice to see you tuning in, Al. Uh, Rachel Hansen is also tuning in as well. I'll give you a wave as well. Heather Nash is also watching as well. Um, I don't know what the weather's like in Birmingham at the moment. Uh, 
Paula Carterton is also tuning in. Nice to see you. Emma Mark, who is watching. Heather Nash, uh, morning to you and Jane. Uh, I'm, want I'm wanting your lovely weather. Oh, bless you. Oh. Uh, Julie, uh, Lorraine Julia Hudson is also tuning in. She says, morning, Ginge. Andrew the Fridge Watkins over there in Wales is tuning in. Uh, Steve Hinkling says, I hope you and Jane are enjoying the sun. Well, yeah, we, we are kind of enjoying it today, to be honest. It was it was lovely yesterday. It really was nice weather yesterday. Uh, Jerry Hoyle is also watching as well. Um, once again, just a quick uh, a quick announcement. We had some issues yesterday with the server for beatsradio.co.uk. Those people who tuned in and were there waiting in the chat area for the Northern Soul Show to be replaced. I'm really sorry about what happened yesterday. Uh, we had some uh, technical breach of the server uh, and basically all the scheduling had all been thrown out of sync. Anyway, that's uh, been looked at today by Ben. But uh, with a bit of luck, the Drive Time Show and also uh, the Beats um, uh, 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 Northern Soul Show, uh, that should be back tonight, 7 o'clock your time in the UK, 9 o'clock my time here. So if you want to come and join me uh, for that, I will be making next week's show today at some point. So those people who put uh, requests in for the Northern Soul Show, uh, your requests have been duly noted, and they're going to be integrated into the show. And can I just say a quick hello to the lovely Carol Bott. Thank you so much for your lovely message you sent this morning um your two song choices will be in tomorrow's live broadcast from here uh, in macarado which i do every wednesday and friday uh that will be tomorrow at uh, three o'clock your time in the uk which is uh, five o'clock my time here i will put those two tunes in that show and also the messages that you put in there as well and jane and i we send all our love and we hope that things for you are getting better. All right, my darling. And uh, chin up, all right, with everything that's gone on. Uh, and uh, you will, you know, you, you'll, you'll get through it all, all right, my lovely. But anyway, thank you for that lovely message this morning. It was greatly appreciated. Right, uh, that's it from me. I'm going to keep my ear to the ground. I'm just having a quick look, see if there's anybody else uh, saying hello. Uh, big shout out to Tim Crystal over there in Oxford. I hope uh, I saw part of your show the other day, buddy. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Nice to see you've lost a bit of weight, mate. That's what I'm going to say. You've lost a bit of weight. You're looking very good well at the moment, fella. Uh, also, uh, Ian Boothy is back home. Uh, he's at home recuperating at the moment. I hope uh, you're feeling a lot better, fella. Nice to have you looking in as well. Uh, Aaron Vardy as well. Nice to see you, fella, tuning in. Caroline Heath. Uh, Dave Foley as well. Raff Reg, buddy. Uh, Tracy Davis, Hillary Rogers as well, uh, John Clifford, uh, still drinking copiously over there in Uzuki. <laughs> He's looking for having a few Uzukias here at some point, and we will see you hopefully. You were talking about coming out, even though we're under yellow, and just staying for the duration. Hopefully, at the end of uh, whenever you have to go home, um, everything will have changed by then. All right, we'll wait and see. Anyway, Sue Parkinson is watching as well. Hilary Rogers, thank you, my lovely. Right, I'm going to have to go because it's a busy day again today. Uh, you take care. Have a great day wherever you are. Uh, I'll keep my ear to the ground. If I hear of anything happening, trust me, I'll let you know. And uh, once again, have a lovely time. I'll catch you later. ta -ra.